Welcome everyone to another gameplay commentary for Project M. Now, I've got a whole bunch of episodes to upload. After all, it's Super Bowl Sunday, and it's pretty much only correct, I think, if I would upload some more episodes. Especially if I'm gonna get more ad revenue, but that's just a bonus, and I should probably get more videos up anyways. Especially since I want to continue my President series. Off of my book of, uh, The Dark History of the Presidents, I shall do a short review, along with some of my own personal bias and views, of all the presidents in direct order. Some you will know about that you maybe haven't heard about, because I imagine a lot of you haven't studied all the presidents. All have their faults, including this one, which this president happens to be one of my favorites. Thomas Jefferson. He was president from 1801 to 09. He was from the Republican Party at the time, which is a little bit between a mix of the left and right. Pretty much, at that time, I'm pretty sure they were just called Democratic Republicans, or something like that. But anyways, Thomas Jefferson, one of the most influential presidents of all time. He cast luster on the presidency, rather it on him. He was a brilliant man of boundless energy, between fighting for freedom and drafting constitutions, which is a big reason why I'm a fan of him. He did great work from archaeology to architecture, from paleontology to gardening. Did a lot of those things. There's a lot of uh, innovation. He expanded America. He expanded America by doubling its size with the Louisiana Purchase. Some people criticize him on spending too much on it, but I don't know. And he sent Lewis and Clark on their expedition to map out the West. Yes, he was the one who sent out Lewis and Clark on their expedition of the West. But he did other things, some which are not so great by today's views. Back in this day, all traditions still continued. A duel, which in short sense was a gunfight that settled quarrels between two individuals in questions of honor. Aristocratic young men still saw themselves as knightly warriors. So yeah, quite a big deal to um, settle their honor in gunfights. And mentioned because Aaron Burr, Jefferson's vice president and former secretary of the treasury, Alexander Hamilton, since the campaign of 1800, never managed to patch things up. Aaron Burr and Alexander Hamilton had some uh, quarrels here and there. There was no holds barred in the election, and even after when Burr became vice president, Alexander's father-in-law wrote many scathing articles about Aaron Burr. It didn't stop his election, but it irritated him. But with no end in sight to this, both agreed to a duel. It wasn't casual, though. It ended in utter confusion. Alexander's shot went wide, but he stated he deliberately missed, perhaps to save his pride? Who knows? Or even deeper to damage Burr's reputation, whose bullet made its mark. Alexander had far more firearms experience and didn't seem to explain how hard his hair trigger pistols he bought would be to use. Some who spoke to Burr said he fired out of fear and shock. Some say he was a cold-blooded murderer and Alexander bled to death. I think it was just a ridiculous situation. But he was indicted for murder, but in Washington he was safe from New York jurisdiction. So, classic case of, of uh, politicians evading the law because they are politicians. But, because the duel was pretty much consensual, I don't see why at the time it would, should become too huge of a deal. Regardless... But Jefferson was pretty much a deist. Pretty much a deist as he believes there's a greater God, but he doesn't interfere with today's creation. I'm kind of a mix between Catholic and deist, but maybe I'll save that for a different commentary if you want to hear about it. But back to what I was saying, he made a lot of jokes. He passed a ruined church saying, good enough for him born in a stable. That was a Jesus birth joke. <laughs> but people were shocked when the story got out. But honestly, it's not that big of a deal. Sometimes I can even I, even I can take some jokes at Christian Christianity once in a while. Cyanide and Happiness co uh, comic I saw was uh, Jesus hanging from the cross of his arms. He said, "Can you put some nails in my shoes too? My sandals keep falling off." That was a really bad one, but I laughed. So 
I, I learn to take some humor from time to time, as long as it's not too extreme. Back to what I was saying. Thomas Jefferson also invited Thomas Paine, famous author of The Rights of Man, which was an inspiration to leaders of the American Revolution. During the French Revolution, when his rhetoric wasn't cooling, the U.S. didn't feel like revolutionaries anymore, especially after the French Revolution, and all the violence that came from that. Frederick's press painted him a blood-soaked monster, and readers were not so easily persuaded. Jefferson passed self-defeating laws, too, like the Embargo Act of 1807, which this prohibited import or export of all goods to foreign ports. It was meant to hold up neutrality in war between Great Britain and Napoleonic France. And it was to have American pretty much feed itself and be self-sustaining. Good point and had good intentions, but um, it didn't exactly fall through. I'm all for self-advocacy for a country, but it just didn't quite work out. And complete self-advocacy for a country just doesn't work. It was a good attempt, but it didn't quite work. Here's why. The industrialized North wanted more, though. They wanted to trade, and they wanted to bring in raw materials and ship out products that were manufactured. Leg the legislation was unforceable. Goods were brought to Canada, then called me over the border. But even with the smuggling, industry and trade suffered. New York was very close from succeeding from uh, the uh, Union because they really were pretty much based off of trade. And with the crisis it was having, due to having to cut off trade, even with the smuggling, Jefferson was pretty much forced to lift the embargo, but not until 1809, a few days before presidency was pretty much at an end. After his wife died, Jefferson pretty much was, um, he was in quite some depression and he was in a bit of shock too. I admit, probably losing a good wife is probably a big thing to anybody. Not that I would know anything about relationships, but... After that, he turned to Polly Madison, which was the wife of the Secretary of State. She was a good, entertaining hostess, and political opponents hinted to a possible sex scandal. They also suggested James and Jefferson were pipping Polly and her sister Anna to political allies to gain support. I don't know about that, that seems, that seems a little far-fetched. But Jefferson had six children with his old wife, Martha, which died before his presidency, and he felt great grief. Then, a 15-year-old slave girl, Sully Hennings, he pretty much had a second family with. I think you know where this is going to. Due back then, rights were more for white men. But at the time, it was hard to do anything without upsetting the South. Whether you saw it as a good or bad thing, Jefferson's relationship with Sally sure was an enduring one. And it went on for 38 years, and they made seven children. So, that's always a big part of Jefferson, which I could possibly find a fault in. Whether it was consensual between the slave girl or not, who knows? Probably not. But, whether the case was made or not, it sure, it sure um, produced a lot of children, but I consider that probably a fault of Thomas Jefferson for turning to a slave girl, especially one very young. So you could consider that a little uh, condemning to him. But trust me, all presidents have had their faults, and, and uh, you'll see once I continue this series. Anyways, Jefferson was a man of multiple talents, and is a great man of government ideals in my book in my own, uh, opinion. You can search up his comments on government and control. Even though he was considered to be on the left, he was much against, you know, big government and tyranny over the average person. Which is kind of why he's a kind of a mix between, I'd say, Democrat and Republican. He increased American size, he may have poor, paid more than the land was worth, and helped America's size expand in the long run with Lewis and Clark's expedition. His embargo act was self-defeating, but had good intentions. But there was that relationship with him and his slave girl. And whether it was consensual or not, like I said, I don't know. 
But anyways, that's it for my Thomas Jefferson review. Tell me what you think, and tell me if I might have missed any facts about Thomas Jefferson that I could get to know. But anyways, comment, rate, subscribe, do whatever you want, your choice, and have a good Super Bowl Sunday. Eat plenty of chicken wings. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday.